we're moving on to a multiplication, three methods of multiplication to doodle. You've probably seen a traditional method for multiplying numbers. If I have something like 12 times six, then I take the six at the bottom and I kind of combine it first with the ones column of the other number. Six times two is 12. I could write it like that, but I usually carry. And then I have six times the tens place. Six times one is six. And with that one added, I get seven and I'm done. Or you taught any other methods where your kids or grandkids taught other methods. Sometimes you've seen them bring homework home and it's a method you don't know for multiplying and it's annoying because they want help with their homework and you don't know what to do. So let's look at three different methods for multiplying. First, we're going to compare this traditional method with the one we'll see most often because of schools in Eugene and Springfield. And we can call it the box or rectangle or lattice method. And I mention all three of those because the YouTube videos from our course can call it all three of them. If I go up a little bit, then we have lots of videos for multiplying and dividing, and they will use different names. So I am going to do, copy this. Oops. So I can take one and destroy it and make it bigger. Okay, what happened on this side? Again, I usually am taught to start with the ones place on the bottom number and I kind of launch it at every other digit in the top starting with ones and working my way left. So five times one is just five. Five times three is 15. Once I've used five with every digit on the top number, then I go on to the next place value, getting bigger, so ones and then tens with the bottom number. And I take this two and I kind of launch it in every direction. Two times one is two. Two times three is six. I have a place value holder that I put in the next row. I don't put my red two from two times one in this spot. The two goes in this spot. Why do I have a, a scoot, a place value holder here? No ideas because we were taught to do it that way. I'll give you a hint. It's because this is not a two. Is it because the five isn't there to hold its place? Uh, tell like, me again. Because the five isn't there to, like, you know be in that space yeah i'm going to paraphrase it that this isn't a two it's a 20 because the five is holding some place value of ones and kind of pushing the two to be in the tens place so since this is a 20 20 times one is 20 20 times three i'm sorry 20 times 30 is 600 so because this two has a place value scoot from ones to tens, we have to put a place value scoot in its row. Anyway, once we've done our multiplying, in this case, kind of four different multiplyings, then we just add up our numbers. Five and nothing is five, five and two is seven, six and one is seven. Everyone okay with this? Questions on this traditional method? Just can you follow it when I do it? I'm not asking if you can do it yet. I can't hear you, Liv. You unmuted, but something was funny with your mic.
No, I still can't hear you. No. Okay. What I would recommend doing is next to your mute button, you have a little down arrow and see if it's switched to a different microphone when you plugged in the, your earbuds. Make sure it's on the right microphone. So on mine, if I click this little thing next to the microphone, then I get a list of all the different microphones plugged in and all the different speakers I have, and I have to pick the right one or it doesn't work. Ah, okay, I got your text. So if you can fix chatting, great. Yeah, I'm assuming that no one has done this in months, if not years, because how often do we do this in real life, right? We all have phones and calculators now. I have no idea if the GED will actually ask you to do this or not, um, but let's pretend it's going to. Let's pretend there is some test up ahead in your future where you need to know how to multiply without a calculator. The other thing we see is this kind of box method. So it makes a rectangle and splits it up. This is a two digit number. So I need two different columns, one for the one and another for the three, which is really a 30. If my number was 531, then I would need another column for the 500, but I don't have a three digit number. So Similarly, this side, I have as many rows as I do digits in this number. So since 25 has just two digits, I have a 20 and a five. So that's the setup. 31, I'm gonna split it up into 30 and one. 25, I'm gonna split it up into 20 and five. Once I've done my setup, then in each rectangle spot, I just kind of play battleship. So this rectangle has this one and this one, 20 times 30 is 600. This rectangle has this one and that one, 20 times one is 20. This rectangle goes up and sideways, 30 times five is 150. And this rectangle, if I go up and sideways, five times one is five. Everyone okay of how I got my four colorful numbers? So that's not a math answer. How do I get 31 times 25 out of these? Same kind of thing I have to do here. I finish by adding things up. So 600 and 150 and 20 and five. And when I add them all up, then I get 775, except I'm out of room. I've tried to color code it so you can see that they were exactly the same multiplication steps. We had a five times one that got us a blue five. Here it was a five times one. We have a five times three that got us a green 15, but it was really not five times three, but five times 30. So in this system, it's 150. We just don't see the zero. And here it's 150 and we do see a zero. Then we did two times one is two, but it was really 20 times one is 20. And then we did two times three is six, but it's really 20 times 30 is 600. 
and here you don't see the zeros on the 600 and here you do. So some people like seeing this because their kids at Eugene or Springfield had to do this kind of thing in some workbooks and they weren't sure what was going on. And now you can help kids who are doing this in the local school districts. What's wrong with the first method though? Because that seems much simpler in my opinion. Nothing's wrong. It's just different ways of doing it. If you want to get really funky, then here is another way. So Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, didn't like how when there were lots of digits, you sort of had to sometimes reach pretty far to multiply things if there were lots of digits up at the top. So he said, you know, I'd rather take a strip of paper and move things around. So this is kind of funky. And I am again going to make a copy of it so I can have one to destroy. So his method said, I'm going to take the top number, the 31, and write it on a different piece of paper backwards. So the ones go here, then the tens, then the hundreds, and so on. So you write your number that way instead of this way. And then his system is you put the paper on, and any time there's two numbers, one above each other, paper and background, you just multiply straight down. So one and five makes five. There's nothing else straight down. So we're going to scoot the paper again. Now we have two things going straight down. Three times five is 15. And two times one is two. So we'll add up those together and then put them. And in his method, if you have a two digit thing to write, then put the tens column down below and down a little bit. Then you scoot again. Now the only things lined up right above each other are three and two. And that's it. So then we add everything up. Seven, six and one make seven. And again, we get 775. And if you stare at this, I'm not expecting you to, but if you want, you'll see that there's still the same blue five, green 15, which is really 150, red two, which is really 20, and yellow six, which is 600. I've never seen anyone like this method, partly because no one's heard of it, and partly because who wants to cut out pieces of paper and slide them around. So your job eventually is to pick one of the methods and make it so you are happy using it if you ever had to. Someone calls you onto a game show and says, quick, multiply these numbers and win lots of money. I'm not sure when you would need this, but if I was to do 79 times 25, tell me how to do it with a traditional method. I will write because I have my fancy pen and things and you don't. Where do we start? If you want, I will even grab this one. Oops. Put it there so you can have it as an example. Okay, which digit do I start with? Nine. The nine, nine times five is 45. Okay, then what? And the seven, 
Seven and five is 35. Whoops, I missed, messed up my color coding. Seven times five is 35. I am thinking for just a moment, don't trust me here, 35, but I'm not writing this five, right? Because I have to ha include the four that I'm carrying also. So what I'm going to write is 39. And that nine has both the blueness of the four and the greenness of the five that was with 35. Okay, then I put in my place value zero because that two is really a 20. Tell me what to write next. And nine times eight, uh, nine times two. Mm -hmm. Nine eight. times two is 18. I'm gonna get rid of this four because it's confusing me. Yeah, we're done with that, it's been used. Okay, and lastly, seven times two is 14. But I'm not going to write a 14. I'm going to include this one and write a 15. Mm -hmm. But there's kind of a little bit of redness to that five also, right? Because the one is included. Then I add everything up five and nothing is five. Nine and eight is 17. Three and one and five makes nine. And then there's one. Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. And if that's your favorite way, great. There is nothing wrong with that way at all. The other way, I'm going to make my box. I'm chopping it up two columns and two rows because one number is 79 and the other number is 25. Again, I would need more chopping if I had more digits, but I don't. Okay, I can do these four in any order. It doesn't really matter which I do first. Why don't I just sort of pretend like I'm reading a book and go that way. 20 times 70 is Seven times two is 14 with two zeros hanging out. Then we have 20 times nine. That's going to be 180. Nine times two is 18 with one zero hanging out. Five times 70, well, five times seven is 35. And there was one zero there on the 70. And then five times nine is 45. And then when I'm done, I have to add these all up. I will not crowd them so much at the bottom this time. So five, five and four is nine, nine and eight is 17. One plus four is five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. And they get the same answer, not surprisingly. If I wanted to be really funky and do it with the Lewis Carroll method, then I would still write 79 times 25. I can't overlap things on the Jamboard without making them an image. So I'm gonna make a image copy of that and then erase the original. And then I want to make a rectangle and have the 79 written backwards. So the nine and then the seven. 
And again, I have to turn that into just one image to overlap things. Okay, so I'm going to grab my other paper, put it on top. Nine times five is 45. Scoot it over. Nine times seven, I'm sorry, five times seven is 35. And nine times two is 18. Add those up together. And I get 53. And then one more scoot. Seven times two is 14. And we get the same answer to no one's surprise. So no one will ever ask you to do all three of these. Your job is to pick one method that you like best and practice it so if you have to do it, you can. Oops. And the thinking thing at the end of this gem board is some students like seeing how most problems in math can be solved with different methods. There's lots of reasons for this. One, if you understand some method, it makes you feel smart. So the more methods you understand, the smarter you feel. Second, it's kind of a good sense of control. I can feel some power. I get to pick which method I want and ignore the others. And lastly, if you hated the method somebody taught you and like some new one better, then that's nice to be able to put behind you something that wasn't working. But there's also students that when they see a teacher do the same problem with different methods, it drives them crazy. They want to just focus on one thing and practice that and get fast at it. When they are doing group work, it's easier if everyone does the same method. It's really annoying if I'm sitting next to April and she's doing a problem this way and I'm doing a problem this way and we're trying to see if we're getting the same answer or not. Or maybe they don't trust the teacher will actually let them use their favorite method. And they're kind of worried, uh-oh, they're going to make me do this method and I don't want to use it. So you could talk to me about which kind of student are you and how do you handle it. Okay, we are out of time for today. I want to emphasize again that we did two very different things. We had a game where you were putting numbers kind of together in the air. Let's just redo this last turn. We knew, let's pretend April is about to go. She's on 22. We roll four dice and we got a six, a three, a four, and a three. Could we make those into 22 so she can win? Hmm. I'm not seeing a way. Okay, so Jaden, let's just pretend that you were on 21. And we'll roll dice for you. Six, two, three, one. You get to 21 with those. My quick wrap up at the end is slow. This isn't working.
I'm not seeing one. Are you seeing one I'm missing? You're supposed to get 21, right? Yeah, we're pretending he's at 21, which he wasn't at this point in the game. But Maybe he was. Anyway. He won. Yeah, he won. Okay, but I'm not seeing that there. I'm trying but to otherwise, it'd be six, uh, six times eight plus two plus one. Um, yeah. April's at 22. Can we get her past the finish line with three, six, four, and one? Sure, with six and four, six times four is 24. With three and one, three minus one is two. And then 24 minus 2 is your 22. So you would get mm -hmm. to roll the die and move forward. So this is very much a things are kind of vague in the air. I'm not copying any process. I'm just getting used to having numbers floating around in my head. As opposed to this, where I want to just practice this. I am mimicking this. There's nothing wrong with mimicking. I just want to learn a process mm -hmm. and get fast at it one or the other kind of way. So math involves both and work on both before your GED. Practice the things that just need practice and also do the things that just exercise your brain. Because when you get some of the harder word problems that you learn in math D, then this kind of thing will help you because you'll be able to sort of have different numbers floating around in your brain and use them the right way. Okay. Thank you all for a great class.